Echitiwa Chideri Yesu Kubanga Ye Mulunji Atu Wade Ebi Runji Binji Ye Vazibwe Mukama Atalu Hamatendo Gaderi Yesu Kubanga Ye mulunji Atu wade Hebi lunji binji Ye vaziwe mukama Ata chulu kuka Thank you Lord All glory and honor and praise Belong to you Lord You are worthy of it all You are worthy of it all O God Blessings and glory and honor and power to you. You are worthy of it all. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are the of it all. You are the of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory, Lord. And you deserve the praise. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve it all. Heavenly Father. We thank you for another opportunity to have these conversations that are rooted in you, God. Father, we surrender our vessels. May you come and walk through us to the glory of your most holy name. And Father, we pray that everyone who tunes in, may they be blessed. May they find answers. May they find counsel. May they find revelation that is relevant to their present moment, of oh God. We thank you because you hear us. In Jesus' mighty name we believed and prayed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> hey how are you I'm good we are back at it <laughs> good <laughs> what <laughs> our our new our found occupation yeah I look forward to it how are you I'm well I'm well. I'm happy. You've been quite busy. Yes, I have. (laughs) Yes, I have. Um, I've been quite the mother, haven't I? How'd you do it? (sighs) It's grace. Grace, grace, grace. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, even when I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> you're cooking, can, you're washing, <laughs> you're cleaning, mopping. Man. Uh, it's, some, some days are better than others. And I suppose that's what life is like. The days I really don't feel like doing anything, but I have to get up and do it. 
There, I was thinking I'd marry this little queen, but the kind of labor you're taking on. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you even think you might? What about, there was nothing about me that pointed to being a slay queen. I thought nothing. I'd marry this celebrity, but I didn't think the celebrity would be well, caught up in labor. You married a celebrity who still understands their responsibilities and their duties. And even when they do not have help, they have to rise to the occasion mm. and do it. Because no one else is going to do it. What you said is very profound. Yeah. Because you speak about a wife as a helper suitable. Yeah. So which means if the helper that's suitable cannot arise is not available, the man has to rise to the occasion. It speaks of uh, responsibility and help. Because you're responsible, if help is there, you're well. Yeah. But in the absence of help, you take on the responsibility. And in, in that is where you truly get to appreciate what it takes to get things done mm. in the absence of help. It is very easy to take help for granted. Yeah, yeah. It's really easy to take help for granted until help is not there, whether it is temporary or permanent. Mm. Then mm. you realize your insufficiency. Yeah. You, are, you can feel quite sufficient, mm. but when you don't have help, you realize that you are insufficient and you mm. need to tap into a place that is far above you, far mm. greater than you, to be yeah. able to keep going. If anyone had told me that, I would be able to keep this up for, it's actually a month now. Oh, is it? Yes. Wow. We make a month on Saturday. I would have laughed because there was a time when I was accustomed to. So there are times when we are accustomed to being on our own. Yeah. And then help comes. Then we forget what it was like mm. to be without help. And then we sometimes take help for granted. And then help is not there. Then you have to recalibrate yourself. <laughs> um, but the beautiful thing is that what is deeply rooted in you, you never really forget. Yeah. All it takes is just a little tweaks here and there. Mm. And you eventually find your rhythm. Yeah. But it doesn't negate the fact or take away the fact that you need help. Mm. Mm. God saw that there was need for help. Yeah. And that is why sometimes I, I get amazed at people that think or feel that they are sufficient mm. in themselves. Yeah. I mean, even God knew we'd need the Holy Spirit. Mm. Jesus knew that as, as he left and ascended to heaven, to his Father, we would need a helper yeah. every time. And that's in the person of the Holy Spirit. And in like manner, we all need help. Amen. But, if I haven't said it, you appreciate it. Thank you. Well done. It is, uh, you. It's beautiful. And I think... Uh, is one of the the perks of being married because as a man I think there's a wiring in a man that's desirous of uh, vision and betterment mm. but uh, as you're trying to look far to where you're going go to the next level there's a necessity to maintain where you're at now you can't be too ambitious that you can't eat food. <laughs> you can't be too ambitious that you can't sleep in a clean house. You can't be too ambitious that your dishes aren't washed. Or the laundry isn't done. Or the laundry isn't done. And uh, it is a gift of uh, that comes with marriage that uh, I enjoy the liberty I can... I can meditate, I can plan, and I know my planning doesn't mean I won't eat. You mm. get? 
Yeah. And uh, it is quite powerful because it speaks of the team. And uh, that team works because you're willing to play in that position. It was quite fascinating. As a child, I, tried, I had an interest in soccer. <laughs> but uh, there's a certain moment where kids started to become too too professional in their soccer playing. <laughs> they spoke of midfielder, number msanfu, number muenda, and I, I did not understand the jargon. But uh, you start to realize that uh, I don't follow soccer, so if I get some other the theory is wrong, <laughs> don't hold it against me. But you find players have positions. You find one is a defender. You find the other one is uh, a striker. A striker. The other is a midfielder. But they're all part of a team that's delivering. But now, these, usually the strikers are more positioned to score. So they're most likely to be the top scorers. Now, a defender who doesn't understand their position may start to last for the glory the of, the, of the striker. Yeah. And there's a temptation to say, why, why comes I'm not the one? How comes for me I'm the one defending? And I remember when we used to play soccer as kids, I don't think I didn't have any glory for defense. I don't know who wants to be a defender. Uh, clearly, I didn't have that revelation. It wasn't my calling. I just felt I wanted to be the guy who scores. And yet the guy who scores also relies on the defender. Exactly. I don't know much about soccer, yeah. but I can, I can say the same for yeah. hockey. The striker is only as strong as the defense. Thank you. So the defending, while he de the defender does not take the glory, they play a very significant place. So you got fans on me real fast. We're talking about soccer and you're saying you don't know soccer, you know hockey. Get yeah, out of here. Yeah, because I played hockey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't play soccer, I played hockey. Mm -hmm. And a bit of rugby, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, so, and I think positions... Positions, they, they start to have a problem when people start desiring the glory. Mm. And th that was the, the trouble with Lucifer. <laughs> Lucifer was gifted. He had a position Very. in heaven that was really quite an enviable position. But then he looked at God's throne. And he's desired it. He desired God's throne. He was not content with his position. To shall be the best in this position, I mean. Which was quite superior over the others in his league. There's a glory that comes to being the husband in the home. The man in the home. Yeah. Nzali and Koko Nkuru. Then no offense, I haven't seen a gizzard in a long time. I don't yeah. think the chicken you buy nowadays comes with gizzard. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to buy the gizzard separately. <laughs> and I don't like gizzards. I think there are some women who don't eat gizzards in their homes that purpose to steal our gizzards. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes aside. But uh, the glory of being a husband. Yes, it's come a, to the position of husbandry. It takes exists. a certain grace for a wife to find comfort and celebration in her position. And the power of it all, the discomfort of the wife when she sees the position of her husband is through that bit of comparison. I remember when I started writing my first book back in many years ago, I never published it. But I, I, I came to the realization of this idea of noise, the negative thoughts that take care from our happiness or joy. And for me, it was written in this side, I couldn't realize that happiness and joy is an inward thing. Mm. You don't find joy from externalities. Now, it's the noise from the outside that actually makes you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. There's a man who sees a friend buying a new car and he starts to lose sleep because he's driving an old car. 
But in all honesty, it has nothing to do with you. It's you who's just taken it in and it's eating you up. Yeah. You get? Uh, I remember when we were learning the, the, the Ten Commandments. We learned them in, uh, in Luganda. Yes, mm-hmm. and during the Catholic trainings. Mm. And I even remember them in Luganda. Togo Manga in Tubi Avant. You get? Is. What's Okwego in English? Admire, but it's more than admire. It's lust, actually. The Bible is a certain language, not admire. Uh, do not covet. Covet, yes. Yeah, yes. It's covet. And uh, you start to realize the same thing in a home. It's, it's a woman who sees the husband on a throne and uh, is like, why not me? Why not me? And it's, it's funny about uh, what an idea can do. <laughs> Sin begins as an idea. A little thought. A little thought. A little question. Why? It is King David walking at the top and sees this young lady, Shari. Mm. I don't know if she was young. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was a lady, at least that would be for a fact. Lady. <laughs> and uh, that's when the corruption began. Yeah. He, and I, I, I learned in my life, there are moments where, as I'm going to about life, there's an awkward thought that comes to me. And always I say, get you behind me, Satan. I don't accept imaginations that are not godly. Because you can't control the imagination that plagues up on you. you but there's one who entertains it. There's one who kicks it out. The devil can sneak up into your house and find the place to sit. And some people look at it and let it remain. Other people say, get out. Get you behind me, sir. Mm. And... Uh, it's those little ideas. I think there's a place of infection when a woman sees her husband and desires her throne. There's a level of corruption that you start to feel, why? Why is he the one? I went to all human beings. I went to all children, the most high God. But it seemed to have an insight. No, I, it's, it's not really an insight. It's, it's just me trying to... What you're saying is, is, is fact. It's me trying to wrap my head around at what point in our heads or in our hearts or in our spirits do we actually get to that place when we feel that we can compare ourselves to our husbands and desire their throne. I'm, I'm trying to, and I think for me it's because, and I know it may not necessarily entirely be the norm, I think I've just never desired <laughs> to carry the responsibility <laughs> of a man. Even when I was on my own and I felt sufficient in myself, I was comfortable with being sufficient in myself, but it's not something I would have chosen. I chose to be comfortable because I did have a choice in that mm. moment. But if it were up to me, I definitely wouldn't want to carry, carry those responsibilities. Remember how we, when we got married and I was so eager to yeah. let go of certain things I was so used to doing, dealing with landlords, yeah. dealing with car issues. I, I just... It's so, it's too much work physically, emotionally, spiritually to deal with that kind of responsibility that I struggle to understand at which point we desire that throne. Though it's interesting, the, uh, that it may not directly be a desire of the throne, it may be a desire of the parks that, that come, come with, with the throne. It is... Uh, for instance, um, you can be married and you may have an idea as well. Mm. And you wish that your idea was the one that ran the home. 
And then you find the authority decides to say, I don't see it, you are going this way. Mm, I see. Because the parks of the throne is the parks of a direction. Is uh, the head decides this is how we are going to allocate resources. And then there's a part of fields, you know, why is why are you the one allocating them? I hear you. But I think with the parks I see and maybe I just maybe I'm just one of those people who in one dimension I like responsibility, in another I don't. Yeah. But you see with the parks that come with the husband in, in the marriage, yeah. I also see responsibility. And that responsibility is heavy. If you make a mistake, it's on you. Hmm. You understand? Yes, we all bear the brand of the wrong choices. But it's on you. You have to, cal you have to be very calculative and very wise yeah. in the decisions that you make. And that is such a huge responsibility. Yeah. I don't think I want that responsibility. <laughs> but maybe it's just, maybe it's just me. Of course, you were right in saying that um, sometimes you have an idea and you'd want your idea to be considered. And yes, there are times in, our, in the early times of our marriage where I felt like, but why does my husband feel like his Anu knows everything? In fact, I would, I would yeah. even say it in Luganda, yeah. most of the time I'd say it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got to a place where I was comfortable enough, you know, to start, you know, to jokingly say it. And then I started examining what I was saying. Mm. And I was like, okay. I think there was a time where you jokingly said, do you want us, and the times you occasionally say it, you're like, can we switch? Let me drive mine because yeah. I don't think I have the gravitas yeah. <laughs> to deal with half the things that you deal with. Yeah. And many times I see you navigate spaces with such seeming ease yeah. and confidence and calmness yeah. and resoluteness or resolution. And I'm like, Lord, I don't think I could ever be able to navigate this minefield like yeah. this. And I think it's in those moments that I appreciate mm. where you are and where I am. Yeah. And it's in those moments that I am reminded that my position in the marriage is not a position of inferiority. Yeah. Because many times, I mean, your mind runs like at a hundred plus kilometers per hour, almost yeah. 300 kilometers per hour. And half the time you're throwing things at me in terms of ideas and blah, blah, blah. And there are times when I feel overwhelmed. I'm like, because the moment you share something with me, for example, I'm, I get into execution mode. Hmm. So I start questioning. I'm thinking, how is this going to be executed? And I, it took me a while to realize yeah. that. Then I realized, wait a minute, the reason why I kick into execution mode is because inherently I am wired to help. Mm. So the moment my husband shares something, I already start thinking, how are we going to implement this, yeah. regardless yeah. of what it is? And it's in those moments that I realize that my position as a wife is actually not a superior position, but it's a position of privilege. Yeah. The yeah. fact that I can be trusted yeah. with an idea, yeah. I can be trusted to think through certain things and help execute yeah. is superior. Not superior to you, but it's not a place of inferiority. It's a, it's a place of strength. It's actually remarkable. Yeah. The, the work you've been doing at home in absence of help, uh, keeping make sure the house is clean, dishes are washed, clothes are clean. I wouldn't do that. I and there's have, food on the table 24-7. And there's food on the table. 24-7? Okay, when we have an interesting Just meal kidding. structure. Um, <laughs> I, I wouldn't do that. And very likely the capacity that allows you to do those chores, that same capacity can help bring visions to life. It doesn't surprise you that it's still the woman who bears children. Mm. And uh, why that's actually powerful, there's a time I was uh, 
I wanted to understand the spirit world, but I realized there's a, a dimension to the spirit world that is um, that is experienced by people in the occult. So I l- listened to a certain man. He'd, he said I've been in the occult, but he said one of one of the things that I found remarkable, and it was uh, uh, a money ritual. And in these money rituals, is that uh, they would lure certain women, mm. and uh, they would lay with them, and sort of end up in such a covenant that really wanted to use their womb. Mm. And the idea was uh, was that ability for the womb to take seed and grow it. So they were dealing with a woman, a woman's womb in the spirit and its faculty Mm -hmm. as a tool for money, making money. It blew my mind. In all the wrong ways. Yes, (laughs) because it showed they had an understanding that there was more to the woman than just beyond the physical of what you see. It is the spirit that comes with the woman. Mm. It is the spiritual element of the woman who was created as a helper suitable. That she was designed, according to the Bible, as a helper suitable. That if God had to figure out what the helper looks like, she was carved to speak. (laughs) Just as you have a suit custom tailored to you, Mm. the woman was custom tailored to suit the man she was to help. Mm. So you start to realize there is uh, mm-hmm. there are competences and giftings that come with a woman for the position she's meant to play, and like man it is for the man. Yes, I imagine there are people in the occult who need something of a man to do something. Perhaps maybe when they try to rule, they may find they're using blood of men and not women, mm-hmm. because men have that natural position of headship. You get so it sort of brings you to to start to see things beyond the simplicity of our emotions. To start to understand who am I? Why did God make me different? My wife, my wife styles her hair. And my hair is right. What is it about my wife that makes her style her hair and my hair is alright? I wear dark colors. She wears bright colors. What is it about that that leads her that way? Mm. You get? And I think when we don't understand these differences, the marriage institution suffers. And uh, I'm reminded to the lady that reached out to you recently. Mm. Um, Of course, we've gotten into trouble many times (laughs) because... (laughs) You and I don't have much in the world of secrets. <laughs> um, Our lives are an open book. <laughs> a friend of yours um, got mad because she figured that she had shared certain information with me, mm. which I think is crazy. We are married. The two become one. Yeah. If there are secrets between me and my wife, there's a problem. And... Uh, the only secrets we may keep are secrets to cover up people. Yeah. But not to keep something from one another. But uh, they are, there's a certain... And the people usually think of covering up are people who... Uh, much more so when it tends to things like family. Mm. Because there's a certain image that has to be protected. Mm. You get but we aim for transparency. So that lady reached out to you. Okay, what did she say? Just summarize the essence of our communication. Sorry, which one now? Because I thought um, we were talking about my friend. No, the lady reached out to you about... The most recent one? About my short form. Ah, okay. Yeah. I think it was from a place of desire to 
understand. Look at me interpreting <laughs> instead of stating yes, the facts. Right, right. Um, I think there was just a, there was a curiosity and an inquisition as to whether my husband had any shortcomings. No, you haven't brought it away. Because Allah, Allah, <laughs> allow me to story I'm a, com- I'm a communications person, so I, I repurpose no, things. No, no, no. Then you lose the spirit of it. <laughs> the spirit of it was um, this lady had been bothered for a while mm. because she had seen a pattern on our podcast. And it seemed like always my wife was the one that was vulnerable. Yeah. She was yeah. The, always the one who has shortcomings and she has to apologize for them. And then she's wondering, uh, I think she communicated this in a political way. <laughs> she said, where does the mommy stack also share his shortfalls with us and we learn from them. But really what she was inferring is how comes it seems Mwam Safim doesn't have shortfalls. But, but there was an additional question there okay. right after that. And it was the question of, um, is it that you do not call out Mwam Taka's shortcomings? As, is, that, is that what submission looks like? So it was, there was a part of it that was really from a place of curiosity. <laughs> Why are you giving me that cassette eye? No, I'm listening. <laughs> So that I know you. <laughs> I know you. I can read you like from a mile away. Yes. Yeah, so that was another question that came through. Is that what submission is? And this person also spoke of the fact that they've noticed sort of similar patterns in their own very long marriage. Yeah. So there was a bit, there were quite a number of things therein. Yeah. And uh, then we went on a journey to search for your shortcomings. When, when, they, <laughs> when they shared that question, I'd heard other people say some things like that in the yeah. comments. But these people were more of uh, inclined towards a judgmental position. Yeah, which is kind of different. they make a one. judgment. Oh, this marriage pains me so much. <laughs> I already see how this man... And they, they sort of make a, an analysis of me on how terrible I am. And, <laughs> and they sort of conclude it. Now, I am not... Uh, for someone who concludes the matter... I don't know how to speak to you because mm-hmm. one of the things I'd like, let's, let's reason let's, together. Let's reason. Right? Perhaps you've seen a pattern. Maybe I also can't see it. Let's reason together. Let's, let's brainstorm about this. Let's see this angle. And I think the fact that this lady reached out, yeah. she didn't just get in the comments and throw things out there yeah. that she felt because all of us have opinions when you see things a certain way. Yeah. But our opinions are not necessarily the truth. Right? But one of the, my approaches to life is that it's okay to have opinions, but sometimes be open-minded, right? That's the idea. Uh, in science is what you have as a hypothesis. You mm. have a hypothesis about why things are the way they are, but uh, you don't run with your hypothesis. It is proven it has to test, before it, has to it be becomes tested. a theory. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, but she also added something somewhere. Um, Hmm. Have I lost it? Have I lost it? All right. I think I've lost it. But as we talked about initially about her message, uh, I remember that I was at the dining table and I was thinking about it. And I was thinking about it more in a response way mm. of why things are the way they are. But I stopped for a second. I was like, no, let me go ask my wife. And I, had, I knew where I was going. I said, no, sweetheart, what do you think about this? And you're still waiting to the direction where I was, right? Of the reasons why my vulnerabilities and my shortcomings are not coming up. And then I asked a different question. I said, you know what? Let's start to ponder. Let's not talk about why my shortcomings don't come up. What out. are the shortcomings? Let's, now first bring, let's look at the shortcomings. Yeah. Because when you understand the shortcomings... You can, you can understand why they are not coming out, right? Yeah. Uh, why is it that it's my wife's vulnerable? Perhaps I need to start crying more <laughs> <laughs> about hey, mommy, certain things and how I've, I'm making turn, turning I'm repentant. <laughs> um, 
Yes, yes, I remember. See your life. And then she intimated something that was interesting mm. about our previous episode that you hesitated, you didn't want me to, you didn't want to share your view ah, about our incident. Okay, okay, and okay. yet I continued to press on. Yeah. Now, the backstory she didn't have, and this is the part about where our opinions are not truth. Yes. The part she didn't have is that we had uh, an intellectual argument with my wife a couple of days back where my wife felt a necessity of sharing her point of view. And in a particular context. In a particular context. And I, I told her we need to focus on truth the and truth. not our points of view. Now, in this scenario, on the, the episode then, you invited I was me to actually share my inviting point of view. her in a place where she felt was of necessity, right? But because I had already aligned myself to the fact that my yes. point of view doesn't yes. count because yes. we know what yes. the truth is and the line of yes. truth is the only thing that matters. So I was surprised to so hear my you wife, insist. Yeah. I'm like, but My why wife would was I? actually refusing from the level, <laughs> no, my point of view doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It was actually it's from her truth. aligning to that truth, yeah. right? But some people feel... It was because I was taking you to an uncomfortable place. Yeah. Actually, the place where you are, you can correct me if I was wrong, for you to, sh when I called you to share, you, th you felt like I'm giving you a chance for self-preservation. Yes. And then you're like, no, 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 no. Because it, that when yes. every, every time in our discussions and our conversations, I am pushing my point of view, yes. it is, and I only came to this discovery a few days ago, on yeah. the weekend, I think, that it is really driven by the desire yeah. for self-preservation. Yeah. That is the many of the fights yeah. where I really push my agenda. Yeah. It is because inherently yeah. I want to preserve something yeah. in me. And that heated intellectual discussion yeah. that eventually resulted in me having that light bulb moment, that yeah. self-preservation yeah is not godly. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is not godly at all. It is counterintuitive to yeah. death to self. Yeah. And that's when I realized, oh my God, yeah. now it makes sense. Yeah. So for us to come to the altar yeah. and you, you are inviting me to share my point of yeah. view on a previous argument, I'm like, yeah. my point of view doesn't count. Yeah. It, it, we know what the truth yeah. is. Let's focus yeah. on the truth. Yeah. They cannot be my point of view and your point of view. They yeah. can only be the truth. Yeah. And in between there is where oneness is as yeah. well. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And and yet, you see, this is what's interesting about people and misreading, and yet they can run away with their misreading, is that because we, we are at a level where we can communicate beyond the words. We walk together on this journey. We talk for hours yeah. in days. Uh, we know... We've challenged ourselves intellectually on viewpoints. So even when I speak, I'm speaking at Shan at a level beyond what may be visible, visible. immediately, right? And this is where open-minded means is required. That even when you think you see it a certain way, just it may not be the full picture. There yeah. could be something that's eluding you, yeah. right? So, and I think that's where I commend. I commend the the lady for reaching out and asking. I know that smile. I know that smile. The smile because you're always <laughs> being political to cover people, right? No, I, 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 honestly, I honestly commend her and, yeah. and, I, and I, I respected her in a certain sense because she had, she had the mind, yeah. you know, to slide into my DM yeah. and inquire and not just share a <laughs> blatant opinion out yeah. there. But also I think the reason why it was possible for her to do that mm. and the difference possibly between her and some people in the past is mm. that there is a maturity about her. Mm. And that is where maturity is very important because yeah. then you, you understand that these are my boundaries. Yeah. I might have a viewpoint, yeah. but these are my boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something that eludes a lot of people, yeah. even in marriage, because you see, even as a wife, yeah. you and I are, amazing friends yeah we were really good friends before we got married we're still very good friends yeah. right but it is still not lost on me that there is <laughs> you are my husband <laughs> and by virtue of being my husband 
there are certain things I cannot do. Yeah. There are certain boundaries I am not going to cross that I've chosen not to cross mm. because you are my husband, yeah. because I put you in that place. Yeah. And I think it's not, let me switch it up a bit. Over and above being my husband. Technically, you're my husband. Mm. But you are my king. Mm. You understand? So there are certain things I cannot do. Even when I think them. And initially, I just think and I just do, I just say. Mm. But I think I, I am getting to a place of maturity. I'm not yet there, but I'm getting to a place of maturity and recognizing that not every thought should be put out there. Not everything should just be said. Sometimes there is wisdom and prudence in first thinking about what it is that you want to say, mm. examining whether it is really beneficial, mm. if it is <laughs> if it is if it is worth it, mm. you know, and then just keep it to yourself mm. and get rid of it. Because again, you don't want to keep it somewhere lingering in your mind. But there's also wisdom as a wife in knowing that my place as a wife is a place where I am called to cover you. Mm. You know what I mean? And cover you doesn't mean I cover up for you. Mm. I just know that there are certain things that we shall discuss where we need to discuss them. Yeah. And there are other things that we'll talk about openly. Mm. Yeah. And, but also because the reason why I'm comfortable in doing that is because I know that you, you are accountable to a higher power. Yeah. Where if I fail to say certain things, the one to whom you are accountable yeah. And the one to whom you are responsible, the one who's responsible for you, yeah. will call these things out. Mm. And I think lucky for you, there are not many. Mm. <laughs> they are like maybe one or two. But even then, they are reasons. Don't downplay it, sweetheart. I, I, had, I wanted to commend you yeah. about your tact in sort of managing <laughs> people. <laughs> and sort of, you know they are listening and you want them to feel like they are being bashed and you try to uh, bring them back up. I see that tact and it's commendable, which is a bit different for me. Yeah. In the sense that I've I've lived an unconventional life. And for the most part, people have always been disagreeing with me. And uh I, I, I became sort of battle hardened. So there's that nature about me. I'm a you come at me, I, I can go hard because I, I'm very sensitive to certain when I read the spirit that is a certain way to me, I, I may get off a certain way because I've had to defend uh, what I stand for. And that's one of the things that I consider. If they ask me, does your husband have no vulnerabilities or shortcomings? Yeah. That's one of the things that I, keyword being I, yeah. considered yeah. a vulnerability yeah. or a shortcoming. Yeah. The fact that sometimes you can come off as cold. Yeah. And unfeeling, yeah. you know, yeah. but I think for me, because I have walked this journey with you, I have come to appreciate where it comes from. It comes from a positive place. As in, it is that nature, yeah. it, it, your, your drive to attain certain things, and I'm not talking about physical things, yeah. your, your drive for excellence, your drive for perfection, not perfection as we know it in the world, but the life that God has called you to live. Your drive for honoring God and the lack of compromise as far as God is concerned. All these things ultimately shape how you respond yeah. to situations. And for me, I would initially I would struggle. I'd be like, but eh, this guy can't be this unfeeling. Yeah. Honestly, how does he know? As in, he's just that bland. He'll just put the thing there. He doesn't mm. care how it makes me feel. When it's and between the truth and feelings, yes. I opt for truth. You opt for truth. But it doesn't mean I'm not feeling. It doesn't mean you're not feeling. You will opt for truth. But sometimes when you opt for truth, it can leave a certain sense of... But my cold is coldness, my nature, my call to people. You're not necessarily cold to people. But you can come off as cold. You see, it's perception. Yeah, and so unfortunately, what, perception is, is my perception would be my reality. So is it the constant state of this man or is it a state in particular situations? It's a state in particular situations. What is the difference? It's just that those situations, unfortunately, leave the other person feeling, 
fake. As in, how did I not see it? <laughs> like sometimes when you call out, sometimes I can do something dumb. I mean, yeah. I, <laughs> I can do something dumb. When, okay, normally when I say I can do something dumb, yeah. it's because I'm really doing something kind of yeah. <laughs> you from my kind of thoughts. So when you, when you call it out and I realize, oops, I, how did I not, how was I operating in this realm of carnality yeah. so yeah. strongly and defending my carnality, yeah. then I feel fake about it. Mm. Now, because I feel fake about it, I feel bad about it. I feel bad about myself. Now, because I feel bad about myself, mm. then my automatic response towards you or what you've done or what you've said in that moment mm. is, this guy is so cold. Mm. As in, couldn't he have dressed it a certain way so that it doesn't feel a certain way? Yeah. You get. But I think I'm at a place in, in our marriage where I have come to realize that it's in those uncomfortable moments Okay, I've come to realize that one, I can't change you mm. and there, I shouldn't change you mm. because now I, I understand the realm in which you operate. Mm. And that's why I keep jokingly saying, but eh, hey, Mishtaka, you're so dead. Mm. As in, you're really, you're really such a dead man, you feel nothing. Mm. Yeah. So I've, I've realized I cannot change you and I shouldn't change you. But I've also come to realize that it's in some of those moments that my eyes have been opened up to areas in my life mm. that need help. Mm. And if you were not that kind of person, yeah. perhaps I would not come to that awareness. Mm. <clears throat> because you see, God will speak to us yeah. in different ways, yeah. the ways he chooses to speak because he's God. But there are certain things that only people that are closest to you mm. have the ability to put a mirror in front of you mm. and you see it. People that are far from you are not able to do that. And I think that's why people who are very close to us sometimes end up hurting us, mm. especially if they're truthful. Yeah. They will say things that will hurt, yeah. that will pierce us. Mm. But as long as we understand and we appreciate that their heart is in the right place, mm. they're coming from a good place. Mm. We are playing on the same team. It profits you nothing to yeah. put me down. Yeah. I, I can't say the same of another person because mm. honestly, some people are quite narcissistic, mm. right? But now I am speaking in the context and I have been in narcissistic relationships mm. before. So mm. I know when what I'm dealing with yeah. is the real thing. Yeah. You are my husband. We are playing on the same team. We are mm. on a journey to oneness. We have one common goal and one purpose. Yeah. You profit nothing yeah. by putting me down. Yeah. I profit nothing by putting you down. Because mm. in pulling you down, I am pulling us down. Mm. In you pulling me down, you're pulling us down. Mm. And that's something that's very obvious to us. And that's, I think that's one of the things about marriage. People on the outside mm. do not necessarily have the full picture. So they will only be able to speak to the extent that they see. But before you, I lose you. You mentioned something that I found profound is uh, I have my my head bubbles with insights. I don't know if I've cultivated my mind that way. I, I don't know if things. it's a gifting upon my life. I don't know what it is, but I'm in a perpetual state of insightfulness. Yeah. That to see new angles is my constant way. So if I look at someone, if someone does something, I will see something into it. And I've learned to see things even that people could not even see. Like I remember recently I was reading, uh, I, was, I, I, I saw a certain verse, I think a certain minister was ministering. And it was about when God, when Solomon was building the temple, he built it with a ramp. The mm -hmm. altar in the temple, he built it with, there was a ramp going to the altar as opposed to steps. Stairs. Mm. And because somewhere in the <laughs> Old Testament, in the law of Moses, God instructed them to not build steps because mm. he didn't want to see their nakedness. their nakedness. Now, I want you to imagine that a man walking up steps is showing their nakedness. In your kind of mind, you cannot comprehend it at all. But yet God made, and people built a ramp. 
now I've exercised my mind to be akin to such insights. Mm. But now imagine a woman going up to the altar of God using the steps and you tell us, sweetheart, use the, the use ramp. The ramp. <laughs> like <laughs> why you show God your nakedness? Now she'll take offense at that because it's really? Now the difference is I see those angles. Mm. Other people may not see them. And even if sometimes when I, I used to call you out on certain things, sometimes I would try not to. And like, like I, I'm really like stepping on it. You get? Because I know she's going to react a certain way, going to mess up the mood. It's actually self-preservation tells me step on it. Because I don't say it because I want to sting. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me give it to her, right? It's like... Let me stick it's a like, pin no, in it. I think... <laughs> She's missing something. Mm. She's missing something. There's an angle. Let me show it to her. And I had a similar incident with a friend of mine, I think about a month ago. I was in the village. I'd gone to the village with my, par my parents and uh, some siblings of mine and other relatives. And as we were there, I just got a revelation about a friend of mine. And you shared it. And I picked up the phone just immediately. I, I, <laughs> let me give it to him. Now, these things come to me. And I really, <laughs> I would not, I would desire to not be about other people's business. Like, I would rather just be about mine. I'm not. You have quite a lot of. I'm not a chap who wakes up looking for friends or looking to be liked. Mm. Unfortunately, God didn't give me that desire of wanting to be liked. Mm. So <laughs> I don't do this thing like, oh, man, let me. Let me build friendships. Let me be cool. You know, something drops in my heart. I'm like, this guy may help this insight. Could mm, help him. Insight may help him, yeah. So I picked a phone call and tell this friend this insight I had. And he decides to turn to me. Like, let me give it. He <laughs> decided to give it to me. <laughs> and he went on like a rant. Then I was like, first, first help Hold me. up. What is what the is mistake? It's the mistake I'm telling these things. You tell me if I shouldn't tell them. And I promise you, I'll, I'll never deliberate. I won't bother. Because there's no profit for me in here. If you feel offended, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Now I've learned it. So let's cut it. I won't bother you again. And uh, I purposed to myself, Felix. Don't ever. Tell me I'm to a band. Inside, if he doesn't have it, let the man do his life the way he wants. If he wins, he doesn't win. It's up to him. It's his life. Don't bother yourself. And uh, I, cut, I cut him out. I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? Sagara. And usually I have a tendency when some things go, give me headaches. Stop, stop, stop. I close that door. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I actually update uh, their, their name in my phone with the word stop, stop, stop. Even because I had a stop, stop, stop. I know I can't point. help myself. There are people who... I'm close to, yeah. and I'm always going to see things and I want to call yeah. and let them know. So I put a stop, stop in my phone to tell me. Oh. Don't, when you feel the urge to yes. call, don't call. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, I did that drive fast. And after I drive fast, I felt a leading to reach out. And the leading was uh, because I realized that God had put me in a place to work with certain people. Yeah. And I was like, Felix, just because people make it painful for you, it's not reason enough for you to, to give up because yeah. that may be the very thing that devil wants. Mm. And I picked up the phone and reached out to them. I was like, ah, hi, how are you doing? Uh, how's family? And da, da, da. they're like, it's good. I was like, ah, good. I remember the shock in their, in their, in their, in their voice, in their voice. Like, though, that's all. <laughs> Cause I know my calls are usually long. And then, uh, I just left the conversation and then, I think somewhere recently, I think over the Saturday, I think I had, I don't know, I was walking and I was meditating on something. And there's the times when I'm meditating, I'm inclined to talk to people. The prevention I'm talking to people, I will see certain mm. things. So I was led to call this person uh, on my walk and reached out to them and we ended up talking for four hours. Four hours, and I was supposed to edit the episode because I told it on Friday, and I was supposed to go live. And but he said something profound as we are talking. 
that the reason he got mad is that the thing I was t- had brought his attention is the thing he had purpose to do. Mm. And he felt a certain way like, dude, are you going to always be right? It's a, it was an element. Are you always going to be right? So he did not get disturbed because I was wrong. He didn't get disturbed uh, because I, I was a certain way. The disturbance was I was so right. And uh, of course he has mentioned it and he said it over and over that one thing he has no doubts about is my heart. Yeah. Yes. So, and of course his, his phone parallels between himself and you. Yeah, I know. Because... <laughs> 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 so, and it was fascinating for me because, and I like that he came clean because he gave me the insight into it. Yeah. Which also delivers me from the burden, or maybe I'm a bit too much. I need to look, too, but it's like no, no, you're actually spot on, and that was the part that was disturbing, right? And so, and it's it's fascinating speaking to the part of coming up as called. I uh, when I read the Bible and I see about Jesus being the pattern man, <laughs> there's another gentleman who said he doesn't. He always struggles talking to me because he knows I reason him out. I always have an answer of everything. <laughs> I, don't, ah. I, don't, I don't conjure up the answer. Like, it's, it comes to me, and I'm going to share it with you, and you can give me your perspective. It's just that giving perspectives can be difficult because you interrogate the perspective. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so Jesus is the pattern man. Uh, it is God came in the form of flesh and showed us how to live this in the godly way Mm -hmm. what's the pattern of the godly way and uh, when you read the story of jesus you actually find some people could call jesus called right because this guy comes and tells him and tells him you know what let me first go bury uh (laughs) someone we've lost and jesus tells him let the dead bury their own dead yeah that sounds cold that's really cold. cold but it makes sense what business do you have with the dead you understand me? There's a more pressing There's urgent a more matter pressing in front matter. of you. The person yes. is dead. Let them be. Yes. Then Jesus is ministering to people. Mm-hmm. And they come mm-hmm. and tell him, your, fa- your mother and your siblings mm-hmm. are out here looking for you. It's like, who is my mother and all my siblings? Those who do the will of my father. father yeah. Like, man, that's rather cold. Now, it's so fascinating that uh, I have fashioned myself to to the pattern of the people who have set good patterns in the Bible vis-a-vis the natural inclination, the, the emotions of men. It's risky, right? But, but I'm also empathetic. I am, I am intellectually empathetic. And I approach <laughs> empathy from Maybe a, that's the problem. an intellectual point of view. It's not <laughs> my disposition. Right? I am not, I don't get into, but I've learned to be, to take responsibility and care for people in responsibility, but not lovey dovey. Right? Let's just agree you're a different man. Yes. <laughs> so that's not helpful. That's a, that's a, that summarizes. I like getting to the heart, root of the matter. Okay. Because to say I'm a different man, okay. What's the difference? It just closes that box. Let's okay. understand what's it about the difference. Right? Okay. And, uh, yes, so, it is, uh, for example, I can be in a place and I think about how people are doing and reach out to them, right? But even as I'm reaching out for someone, how they are doing, it is not emotion, it's in truth. Mm. I feel a lead in finding out how this person is doing. It's not emotional. I, I'm, not, I'm not like my heart, no. It is in truth. It's been revealed to me. How's this guy doing? I remember there's a gentleman I was talking to, and uh, uh, I asked him, how's the relationship? And he told me he had had, a, uh, I think, a breakup with the mother, mother of his child. And I asked him, how are you doing? How are you doing? How are you managing that? How are you dealing with the mental effect of that. It's like you're the only one who has asked me that question. And I told him, 
no, I'm, I'm a pastor. It's a pastoral gifting that allows me to care like that, not because I'm a special emotional guy. I'm not, not I'm, I'm, that's not my terrain. By wisdom, I can, I can be caring. By wisdom, I can be uh, empathetic. But it's not from a certain place. And if it comes today and your emotions are competing with truth, it's an easy decision. Truth. You get it's uh, the scenario I had recently. Um, a young man reached out to me and uh, mm. <laughs> he reaches out to me and he says, Hi, Felix, how are you? I have, uh, I have a need I want to ask of you. And then I ask him, who is this? And I think that hit him off because he was talking to me like we are acquainted. And then I was asking who he was. And you didn't even have his number. Unfortunately, I hadn't saved his number. Mm. And uh, because I know that people who are usually shady that call us up trying to, to, to scheme, right? I'm really very skeptical on people who are engaging me like they know me. So I tell him, uh, who is this? Like, ah, ah, it's, it's this one. So I was like, which one? And that I'm sure hurt him a certain way. Mm. I said, ah, nah, never mind. I just called to say, I was like, no, no, no. You called me, you had a need. I know it's no, it's no big deal. I just wanted to say hi. I was like, no. When you called me, you mentioned there's something you needed. He's like, ah, okay. Ah, I'm a bit stuck in the 200K. And uh, I remember the time we had, I think, 400K on our bank account. And I, I, I called you. I was in the bedroom and I called you, like, Sean, first count. And I told this young man has reached out to me. And I want us to use 200 key and give it to this young man. And uh, I remember in that incident, my wife is like, man, Felix, there's these things that have to be done. And I'm like, no, let's help him. And he said he'll pay it back. And for me, <laughs> in that <laughs> moment, it was like, what's the line of truth? Hmm. Because my father has cut on a thousand hills. I live like a child of a king. That's an idea people don't understand. Some people live as the, uh, they live as the children of the money in their pockets. <laughs> I live as the child of a king. But at the same time, I am moved by compassion with, because I know the position of headship and being a man. When a man has a necessity, and he told me I'd reach out to everyone else, and none had come through. And I've been in those situations where you make phone calls to people to come out and no one shows up. Hmm. And I'm always willing to sacrifice. Because even the cause of which one of the man was really noble. It was beyond him. It wasn't just a, a man. I wanted to buy, take man. this chick out. Or, no, it was quite a noble cause. And I was like, no, I will stand with him. I will stand with him. Right? Now, that's not how coldness looks like. But yet now, to my wife's point, it may really be like cold. Like this guy is not thinking about the things I need. You get? And yet for me, I learn with the truth. And I look, I look at it with my wife. I'm like, sweetheart, we're in this thing together. <laughs> we are dead together. <laughs> we're doing God's work together. Yeah, we are doing God's work God together. God comes first in our household. Yeah, he does. Sometimes yeah. I struggle a bit. I yeah. just want to, want to negotiate with him and say, God, no, 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 no. Let first sort me out before you start sorting out other people through me. <laughs> you know, but, but we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get but, there. Yeah. Oh, we'll get there. Aha, uh -huh, what are the other shortfalls that you that that for me really with? was the major one. You coming off us, and you know, we we went around this last night. And whichever way we looked at it, yeah. it, was, it was that seeming coldness or detachment. Mm. Yeah, which I, I, I could explain. <laughs> I could explain. I could not explain. I could understand where it comes from. Which is, of course, what yeah. makes it interesting. Is that I don't see it as a weakness I have that I need to get. Mm. It's not a jig I need to get out of my foot. What are you talking about? It's... <laughs> It's something I actually feel is one of my strengths. Because I came to realize 
that the difference between people who achieve their goals and the people who are not is some people are not resolute mm. to be successful. There are people, there are things, I, I had this analogy one time, and it's a cold analogy, which sort of depicts that place you're talking about. I had this story that if uh, there was a young man from a poor household, and he managed to raise money to build a shop, to put up a shop, and his family members come to him mm. to take things out of the shop, my view is that he should not allow to give him the things in the shop. Because if they eat the shop, they are all going to drown. And they're going to miss that ray of hope to deliver them out of that place. Now, I start to realize it requires a certain seeming coldness, mm. a hardness, <laughs> not of hate, of just saying no, no. We have to get here. You get? It's that sort of a discipline. It's that of discipline. Because if we are not disciplined, we will not break through. Yeah. You get? And someone may start to say, I'm like, yo, I- I'll sort you out when we break through here. But here we're not going to eat our capital. We're not going to eat our capital. Because it's taken you years to accumulate that capital to start that business. Now you start eating the capital, you won't be able to make money to take care of everyone else and change your situation. Mm. You get? So some people are so desirous of being liked. And it's quite funny because we speak of that coldness in one regard. And then we speak of my generosity in another. Isn't it interesting that the two aspects can exist in the man? The coldness and the generosity. And the key di- distinction is the coldness is towards emotion. The generosity is towards the leading of God. Yeah. When I feel a leading in my spirit, I'm willing to give without reservation. If I don't feel a leading and all we have is emotion, no. Because when emotion guides my path, that's how people die. Yeah. But God cannot take you to kill you. God is always working for you. That's profound. Yes. And, and I think it is also the place of uh, a king who has charge of a kingdom. For the sake of the kingdom, you have to be willing to be called to people who may actually think they, they're entitled to something. I'm, I'm one of those people, if I was a leader of a nation and my siblings came and they felt they're entitled to certain things, but it was not right, I'm the one who will say no. I am not... I'm a man of, of truth. <laughs> that if something has to be a certain, this is the right way. Mm. No amount of emotions move me. Even myself, I've learned to deny myself for the truth. I deny myself for the truth. How much more? When my wife is conflicting with truth, you can all guess which line you will talk. <laughs> it's nothing personal, sweetheart. <laughs> it's just truth. <laughs> I have the master over me. I have the master <laughs> over me. And no. I love you so much. <laughs> that's one of the things that that's one of the things that I love about you. Even in those moments where I hope you would choose me. <laughs> At least I have I have a confidence that that the ship will not sink yeah. because you are swayed. <laughs> yeah. But I, I know that there are checks and balances. Yeah. But peradventure, if my emotions were going to drive a direction in a certain way, yeah. you are steady enough yeah. to hold the reins of yeah. that ship and it will not sink. 
but there is a man who decides because they have not made that very clear in their heads for the sake of peace <laughs> they tow certain lines and the ship ends up sinking and guess who's accountable there's a part i was seeing i was seeing a sudden angle there and it was about um, yes and i think the burden i'm trying to see how love and respect deals with that place of the position of a king being so so critical that uh, he has to be covered up because he's very like the one thing i'm sure my wife knows i think you've just said it that you know my heart is in the right place isn't it interesting you know my life my heart is in the right place right and i'm sure you know i love you without a yes. doubt but yet i yet at the same time i may do things that don't make you happy yeah <laughs> <laughs> for truth for truth not because of selfish interest. so in those moments i think the one yeah. the one thing i have never doubted yeah. is your love for me and when we even momentarily get out of those uncomfortable situations and i look at the situation that caused a lot of grief and comfort i still recognize that your response was from a place of love yeah. because you desire what's best for me yeah. <laughs> you desire that 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 we sail this ship yeah. to the finish yeah. and not just finish and tick a box yeah. but finish gloriously yeah. Does it make me uncomfortable sometimes? Absolutely. Yeah. I'll even resist it with everything in me sometimes. Yeah. But when that moment passes, yeah. I thank God. Because I honestly know that it, it you see the access that the enemy has is normally in those moments, eh? Mm. in those in those those seemingly mundane moments that the enemy gains access and and there are times i've looked back at certain situations we've had to deal with of course and this is always in hindsight yeah. and i'm like ha omulabe ya daiseo as in if 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 there was no other line of defense yeah. we were finished yeah. like we were really really finished yeah. and i recognize that that can be quite it can be crippling hmm. crippling in the sense that i i could easily get to a place of comfort hmm. and i know that our fence has defense hmm. you know but there are people who don't even have that hmm. and basically their homes are there's no fence around their home yeah. you know it's they are just sitting ducks and they are susceptible to target. Yeah. But what it makes me realize is that I need to allow God to do a work in me that we are not consistently weakening the line of defense. Yeah. Because a man can only take so much. Yeah. And I think that is where sometimes marriages get hit and hit and hit and hit and you wonder how after 16 17 years of marriage hmm. it broke yeah. but that's because there was constant hitting at it yeah it's like when you think about how i think it's how rocks are formed yeah. i don't remember my geography very well but if you constantly away from the rocks if you constantly hit at a stone even with very little pressure hmm. and you constantly hit it hit it just that that successive pressure on mm. it eventually it will break yeah. and i think that's what marriages are like yeah that's what marriages are like and for me it's when i realize that shan you can't keep being like this mm. and it's not that i was being the way i was being intentionally but that is what would drive me in the throne room which i should be doing more often than not mm. and saying god sort me out yeah sort me out i i need help yeah i truly need help because if you do not help me this marriage is going to be doomed mm. because i i think that some people 
there are people who are not necessarily good people yeah. right they're just inherently bad people with mm. their bad issues but then there are also good people in a marriage who mm. as the as you keep hitting at the nail as the nail keeps hitting at the rock eventually they crack and the man who was given an instruction to love his wife as Christ loved the church has run out of love mm. and maybe as a result of everything that's going on he's also been disconnected from the source mm. because if you're permanently connected to the source you're feeding from the source yeah. you understand but while you are embera <laughs> that when it is continuous it will also disconnect you to that from the source because yeah. you're thinking god what is this you brought me into like really and the line of defense is broken you get yeah, yeah. and uh, in line with the conversation from the message of the other lady um while i had a response i thought let's interrogate mm. this short falls but clearly i have many words we can't exhaust our sh- my short falls in a single time <laughs> there are very many ways to may give you someone on each of them and may be converted <laughs> jokes aside um i realize one of the things that was on mind for me was one i felt it was remarkable for you as well that you don't make a habit of calling out my weaknesses because in all fairness there's a saying in luganda omukuru tasobia mm. and uh It's more, it's more like a, how do you translate it the elder can never be wrong can never be wrong it's not real it's not real but but it's first. really the owner that allows you to know to extend to cover, to cover basically yes. yes so it is wisdom to cover not the place of inferiority or yeah. unfairness or injustice and that's why it would be unwise for someone um to go and and call out their parents because they feel they've fallen short. Yeah. I think it's unwise because these parents have an authority over you that you don't have over them. Mm. And uh yesterday I was talking to a gentleman and I was telling him something very powerful that came to me as we were talking and it was about authority. And uh So this idea that uh, if a man buys his plot of land you cannot go and tell him what to do on his plot of land you can't go and tell him that house is wrong let me give you an idea of a house and the place for any man to rise to authority is the moment they go buy their own plot of land and they can their influence can spread on that plot and the same thing is with marriage yeah when i married my wife and i knelt down and told her will you marry me will you come become one with me and we build something together and i was taken to her parents to be introduced and got my my siblings and friends and said let's go and we went and i had to submit myself to my wife's father for me to get that acceptance yeah. into his home to marry his daughter that was the sacrifice that led me to have a home where i access exercise lordship so one something that disturbs people is why is felix to take a lord in his house rachim lord 
Mumakage. Mumakage. <laughs> Everything in my house. <laughs> I am the one who decides how things are. Yeah. When I go to my parents' house, I cannot decide where, which tool they have. No, that's not my place. But when you come to my house, in my house, that is my jurisdiction, I decide akamuli mukateke walisikagala wa mas. Might negotiate a little bit. <laughs> they can negotiate. With good reason, yes. with logical reason. Yes. But if I say it doesn't make sense, no one has that right. Of course, it doesn't mean for love I shouldn't be open. Yeah. For peace, I shouldn't allow other people to share their ideas. But there's no one else who has the right. Others have their option, but not the right. You understand me? There's a place of a right. You may have an option, but it's another to be a right. The authority, the authority in my home. And the reason why my wife is very likely to fall short because the vision that runs the home is it's my yours. vision. Yeah. I am the judge. <laughs> As per the affairs of the Chitaka household. So now do you see why we, why we envy the throne? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. But I take responsibility for that home. Mm. When my, when my, and in like manner, my wife has jurisdiction over the kitchen. The kitchen is her realm. I can't go in the kitchen and tell her how to cook. But when the food gets out of the kitchen and comes into the Chitaka household, <laughs> now there I have a say. But how she goes about her kitchen, I can simply advise. Right? And actually, I think that's where one of my struggles was. I'm like, yeah. dude, this is my space. Yes. You just sit and eat what yes. I've given you. Yes. Of course, I missed the plot yes. of a bigger picture then. So, so I was like, yes. seriously, yes. Mom, Shaka, this is my yes. space. Yes. You stay in your space. Yes. Kitchen, homemaking, yes. that's my yes. space. What I bring out of my kitchen is my yes. business. But of course, I, I missed that. And it doesn't just stop. Some people may stop at the glory that may seem to be a man who can say things to be a certain way. <laughs> I can say, let there be hot water, and it's there. <laughs> <laughs> you see? But in like manner, if my family has no food, yeah. that backstops with you. It's on me. That some people, when people hear about my journey of faith, they may think I'm just seated there. And I'm not mindful about my <laughs> affairs or my family. It just so happens most of the, ch the challenges of day-to-day -day living, they are within. They're not even in the realm where I first to seek God. <laughs> yeah. The livelihood of our family is not a point for me to fast and seek God. Because that is within. Mm. So now, even when my wife is afraid, I am not. Because I know that can be solved. And most of those things I've already saw. From the day I saw my job, I left my job, I figured out a plan of how we are going to sail through. We may sail through not comfortably, but I knew we'd Maybe sail a bumpy through. Ride. I figured out a plan of how we are sailing through. There may be a bit of uh, discomfort, like in a funny car that's not so comfortable, but I took on the responsibility. I didn't just put my family into a place. Guys, let's figure. I also don't know. <laughs> let's pray. No, 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 no. I take responsibility. When my family has no shelter, when my family has no food, I can't blame my wife. No, no, no. If my wife helps out, she's helping. But if she's not able to help, I it's not her fault. Her against her. Yes. It is me that the Chitaka house so the people have to be fed, they have to be sheltered. You get? If I can't pay rent, I don't have money. It's me who goes to negotiate with the landlord. I don't send my wife. I negotiate for the shelter for my home because I have to watch over them. Yeah. You get? So, and that's why when you're in that, it's even a visitor to come in that Chitaka household and not have food to eat, I'd rebuke the people in my home because 
it is the reign of Chitaka. You get? Even if it was because, Felix, you didn't leave money and that's why we didn't have food to give visitors. I, I would, it would be on me. Because in my house, the kingdom should function. So I'm really a hard chap for people to digest. I agree. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I am a bit, for what I believe, I'm unapologetic. I uh, don't mind being hated. And actually, I know, I know many people who actually, <laughs> who actually have issue with me, but most of them don't have the chance to face me and tell me how they feel. Because then we could actually reason about it. Right? <laughs> but uh, I, I hear in whispers in the few people here, you start to realize some people are really, uh, I think something Adrift. about me X them the wrong way. Mm. X them the wrong way. But for me, my goal is about Truth. figuring out this life thing and being the best version of oneself. And my next desire after that is to help other people be the best version of themselves. And for that cause, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to be liked. Don't but if, you, to be if you see me and you say, Felix, what you're doing scripturally, the God you serve actually disagrees with, please bring it on, bring it on. I want to know the truth and be perfected in it, right? Bring it on. But don't bring emotion at me. I, I don't have big time for that. Don't tread in the realm of emotion. No, 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 But also where emotions are important, if it falls, it puts my place, my <coughs> wife in a position that uh, she cannot stand at home. That's now a problem. Mm. That's why I ended my first early. Because it was your birthday. You see, even her, my desire for truth is considerate that I need to love my wife. But you know I actually wouldn't have taken... No problem. Offense. So the instruction of love is to me. Oh. You get? I had to... It wasn't about me. <laughs> but you didn't celebrate my move of how I made cake appear while I was... Uh, I... I, I <laughs> you never disappoint. That's, that's all I can say. That's all I can say. I just, I just remember you insisting when the doorbell rang... I'm like it's early in the morning. Who rings the doorbell early in the morning? <laughs> so I thought maybe it was it was our security guy. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, he'll be fine. Yeah. I know what he wants. I'll sort him out later. Yeah. The bell rang again. I'm like, you know what? I am not yeah. going to the door. Yeah. I'm not right now. Because there are protocols around going to that door, and yeah. I wasn't in the mood for any protocols. <sighs> he said, just go and check. It didn't even hit me. But because I have learned that you you're not random, yeah. you know, I'm like, eh. My husband and sister, I go and check. Let me go and see. Maybe there's yeah. someone who has a problem. I get there. Oh, and I see a white forest. <laughs> <laughs> and what's interesting, my plan was to pretend like I'd forgotten your birthday. I didn't uh, want to talk about your birthday the day before. Uh, like you can't forget. <laughs> so that, no, I wanted you to think I've forgotten. I know you can't forget, so I can't and even think it. Trust me, sweetheart. I tried to exercise my mind to remember it, because I knew if I miss this one. Are you serious? You had forgotten? My memory is sometimes not good. Felix. But I purposed. I, I think I set a reminder. I, I can't Because I knew if you, you miss this one. <laughs> right? No, I can't forget that date, but I can forget that it's you tomorrow can be so preoccupied. or it's on Wednesday. Right? And I knew I wouldn't leave it a chance. But I wanted you to think I'd forgotten. And then you get surprised the morning. Oh, Felix. You remember. I like, uh, every once in a while I get lovey dovey, don't I? You know, like, <laughs> once, like once in a blue moon. <laughs> once in a blue moon, you let, you let your car, your car feel the side come out. But on another note, <laughs> yeah. you're actually growing deeper into a submitted woman. Oh, and uh, consequently, you're going to rub women the wrong way, certain women, because you're an embodiment of that woman who was willing to die. Why did she allow that place? Of why is she the one who submits? Mm. Aren't they equals? Now, the more you take that position, the woman, the more you kneel, the woman who's standing upright. The way she can justify herself by seeing you as a problem. Because it's, it's this A that's the standing or the kneeling is the problem. But if she can't kneel, she's going to bash the one kneeling. 
And yet, I can promise you, those are the things that are bringing peace in our home. I've brought peace in our home. You accepted a position and had the wisdom to realize, no, it's not a place of inferiority. It's a position. But this position I'm playing allows the team to work. Yeah. That we're covering mileage because of position we have. If at all the way we were living was putting us in a predicament where our family is actually crashing, then there could be a problem. So the people who are trying to change things, not because they're not working, but because they make them uncomfortable. uncomfortable. And sometimes we don't first think of why does it make me <coughs> uncomfortable. We are more of trying to define it. When something makes you uncomfortable, sometimes you define it so that you can find peace within. Yeah, that's true. Yes. When uh, there's, a, there's a gentleman who, who, who was talking about certain people being proud because things didn't go a certain way. And they saw that he found a narrative that gave him comfort of seeing people as proud. But he did not take a moment to do an internal reflection. Just maybe, maybe. That's one angle. But what if there's something to me? If people just learn to ask that simple question, is that no, 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 I may be right in what I'm seeing, but let's but try to let's see the other consider. angle. What if there's another side to it that's worthy of consideration? And I think that's, that's really where we, being able to crack that is the difference between whether we shall pivot to greatness and change or we shall stay where we are. Yeah. And I think I came to the realization of that when, <clears throat> you know, there are people who are easy to give feedback to. Mm. And then there are people who everyone fears. Mm. People just scatter around you, they scatter around you. Mm. They're thinking thoughts, but no one has the courage to voice what they're thinking or to give you feedback. And sometimes you get set in your ways. And I think I, I was that person that very many people would scatter around mm. and they thought certain thoughts, but they were terrified mm. <laughs> to even share their thoughts about me and the way I carried myself because there was some sort of sense of fear mm. for lack of a better word. And I use this in the context of <clears throat> maybe the workplace. But I think I also see it in my family. <laughs> mm. People are not very comfortable, you know, sharing their thoughts around certain, around certain situations and certain issues. And I think for me, it's when I came into a certain place and I started getting little bits of feedback on different things, of course, mostly from you. But for a moment, I thought to myself, how come no one else has ever really told me this? Mm -hmm. How come no one else has ever, ever really said this? And then I realized, and, and I used to find a lot of fault with other people, mm. but myself. Even mm. the people who are close to me, they're always the ones that had a problem, mm. but myself. And then I realized, but wait, okay, this was actually even before I got married to you. I think God had set me on a journey where I started, not necessarily from a spiritual perspective, but I thought to myself, there's only one constant. Mm. If all these things are continuously happening and consistently happening, it cannot be that everyone around me mm. is a bad person. Mm. I am the constant. Mm. So maybe I need to look inward yeah. and interrogate why I make the choices that I make. Mm. Why do I make the decisions that I make? Why are these things happening? Mm. Now, of course, in certain cases, obviously, there were fundamental issues with the people around me. Mm. But also I had to ask myself, what is it about me that attracts mm. or that draws this kind of people? But also, what is it about me that accommodates these kinds of people? Mm. And I had to have a tough conversation with myself. It was a painful conversation to mm. have because I needed to be honest with mm. myself. And I realized that Everything that had happened around me, mm. I had allowed to happen. Mm. So, and therein did I find my, I don't want to say freedom, my, not liberty, 
deliverance. Mm. Because then I realized that I have control mm. over who I let into my space. Mm. I have control. I cannot go around blaming other people mm. for everything that's happened to me. Mm. There are certain things that could have happened to me that were not necessarily, that shouldn't have happened, but I recognize this is the part that I played. Mm. I let people in. And then I went into interrogating, why did I let people in? Mm. Then I kept going deeper and I kept going deeper and I got to the root that I need to deal with this situation. Mm. Because if I don't, I will keep blaming everyone else mm. except me. And even if God brought me into a situation where perhaps my deliverance was there, unless I deal with myself, mm. when I say I deal with myself, it's not necessarily me, but unless I let God deal with myself, mm. then I will not be able to get to where I need to get. Mm. And in the process, I'll actually frustrate what God is also trying to do. Mm. In my life, I speak very cryptically sometimes. This, but, today, you've been quite on a cryptic <laughs> spree. <laughs> <laughs> I speak cryptically sometimes. But yeah, may the Lord give people understanding. <laughs> Those that need the understanding, may they get the understanding. Yeah, so I think... And there's something I find very powerful. And it sometimes blows my mind about people. Um, uh, I don't know if I, I got it correctly. I think it was. I think Jesus said that wisdom is it is vindicated by its children, something along those lines. A man cannot claim to be wise if he doesn't have the fruit of wisdom. Mm. <clears throat> a marriage cannot be good if it doesn't have the fruit of a good marriage. Mm. Now, some people look at things in a marriage that disturb them, but they sort of miss the fruit of our marriage. And you shall know them by their fruit. Yes. The fact that this husband and wife are able to agree on a weekly basis and have conversation amongst themselves. If people understood what, what manner you... of success that is, <laughs> there are couples that don't want to look at each other. There are couples that are trying to avoid each other. There are couples that can't have a conversation in agreement for one hour. And this couple has a conversation of one to two hours every week publicly. And not counting the times we spend talking amongst ourselves. And if you look at that route and you say, this marriage really pains me because I see how it's always shunned the one being vulnerable. <laughs> There's the nature of things in the detail may elude us because we know in part. But the biggest judgment you can have is of the whole. If you found Mohammed Stark, and perhaps is in some chick's DMs, then that's, those are valid issues. There's the marriage is broken. Mm. <laughs> okay? If you find that we do not agree, then the marriage is broken. Yeah. We need to learn to know what is the true reflection of a, a thing. Don't need to pick see something in totality. Because while you need to pick with your limited knowledge, you'll have a wrong deduction. Each and every day, when I thank God for our marriage, and the, the thing for me that keep going back to to know our marriage is still working, is this podcast. 
Because it's a place where a couple can be so broken that they cannot even stand here and talk. They can be so broken that we could be having this conversation and Shan just walks up and leaves. Or I walk up and leave. Yeah. That is a possibility. It is the people who forget to see the miracle of life. And they start nitpicking what in life is of. But have you seen that God has given you life? The marriage is alive. Our marriage is alive. Mm. Even if it had a certain thing that was off, it's still alive. Just as like you can have a fever and you still function. But there are those people, I, I remember a lady wrote a message and she deleted it. Like every time I see this marriage, my heart, I am pained. I was like, how are you pained over a marriage? What's it about a marriage that's so painful to you? <laughs> How is a marriage you have no part, no lot in be such a source of pain to you? It is actually an insult to my wife's intellect to imagine that the pain you feel for her is great. She, she, she doesn't feel it. She, she cannot see it. She cannot see the bondage she's in. <laughs> and I usually purpose not to address those people. But sometimes you feel for people. Yeah. Because sometimes in where they are seeing from, they're actually pained. Yeah. But you ask her, when you go to the, to the marriages that are getting divorced, go to people in the URSB and see where they're handing off divorces and say, does the marriages that end up in divorce, do they look like this? Do we have the makings of the marriages ending up in divorce? Or are you just, just using an emotion to judge a matter? It's mostly emotion. Mm -hmm. It's mostly emotion. Na yenga wali ya walu mizi we mitwe. Baya walu mizi we mitima. Ya kida kuka mchala chitaka. But I love you. And uh, it's a joy to do life with you. Thank you. And uh, it's... One of the most amazing things is that if we could, I couldn't talk the way I talked with you, I think I would be drowning in our marriage. How I love to talk. I know, right? And you reciprocated. And I knew it from the moment I, I sent you that first message. I wrote met, a whole paragraph. And you responded with that. It's like, like this one is the one. <laughs> <laughs> this one is the one. <laughs> And, and to imagine uh, I was there doing my own things. I wasn't yes. even, you know, I was just being me. Yes. Kumbe. Yes. <laughs> so, the people who have uh, seen our lives and deduced them as symptoms of diseases without a speciality so on medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, uh, I am. Yes. I am passionate. So some, some of those people cut me the wrong way. Because if you feel you have something you disagree with, reach out and talk to me. I am very open-minded in conversation. But just so as you come to me, just make sure you we don't reach. come that you expect your emotions are going to get things through. No, we're going to talk. And then where I get that from for me was uh, 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 God, God in the Bible somewhere said, come let us reason together. Mm. That was a powerful call for, for God to call us to reason to with reason. him. And I saw that in my father as well. There's a times when I would be, I asked my father a question. And my dad tells me, ah, and what do you think? My dad gave me his point of view and told me, what do you think? He wants to hear your He reason. was calling me to reason with him. And for me, it was quite humbling. And I learned in my life. I call people to reason with me. But you judge me, it's, it's a different matter. You come and reason with me. 
even when I have shortcomings, I'm a man so intent on being the best version of myself. That you will listen. That I treasure anyone who has an insight that makes me better. But if someone has, uh, if you tell me something like, ah, Felix, you talk badly and I can't change how I talk. You're not helping me. You just want me to, to, feel, bad. to, to feel bad and uh, don't feel too good about yourself. Feel bad, feel bad. I don't know how to do that. And I'll rebuke you as I get behind me certain. Because I'm all about the prize. I'm all about anything that brings us forward, not things that take us backward. Yes. Am I getting a bit too passionate? Getting. <laughs> <laughs> I think you crossed that, you crossed that threshold, <laughs> got to the finish line, came back, went back, came back. <laughs> but you wouldn't be you without that side of you. Yes. But for those that uh, struggle with me, uh, for whom I'm, I'm a bitter lemon. <laughs> uh, You're my bitter lemon. <laughs> I ask that uh, you extend Moonsas, you extend yeah. Southern Grace, mm-hmm. for adventure uh, in one or two things where you you don't like me. You may find one or two things where I may be a blessing. But for my wife, that one I have, she has to like me. I don't have to like you. No, I care. It will, for my good experience in the marriage, <laughs> ah, okay. I like it that you're actually happy about me. I am. Yes. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. No, you're my wife. Oh, my wife.